I'm going to use ratio and proportion and explain how we go to 25 cents, how, how we know that a quarter is 25 cents, okay? So I'm going to use a comment to do this. So, oops, I thought, I'm, I, thought I was quoting a Python. All right, so let's do this. So I'm going to say that if, if, if for example, 25 cents, okay, now here, let's, um, let's, let's call it pennies. If 25 pennies is equal to, um, um, so, so if 25 pennies is, sorry, let, let's do this, sorry, rather. Let's do this. If 100 pennies, right, is equal to $1, right? Okay, 100 pennies is equal to $1. Then, you know what? Yes, yes, so then 25, so let's hold on a second. If 100 pennies is equal to $1, okay, then 25 pennies is equal to what? Okay, th that's what we are trying to do here. If 100 pennies is equal to $1, then 25 pennies is, is equal to what? Now, this is ratio and proportion, right? And, and the way ratio and proportion is, work, it's, is this. If more, less divides. If less, more divides, okay? So if more, less divides. If less, more divides. And you, you'll understand that in a second. So if 100 pennies gives us $1, then although we don't know what 25 pennies is, we know that 25 pennies is going to give us a less number of dollars, right? Because if 100 pennies gives us $1, then 25 pennies is going to give us less because 25 is, is smaller than 100. So we know that, but we don't know the exact amount. So if we know that 25 pennies is going to give us less, okay, if less, more divides. Remember, I said if less, more divides, if more, less divides, right? If 25 pennies is going to give us less, then more divides. And what I mean by more divides is the bigger number of these two, the more number of these two, which in this case is 100, divides. And what I mean by divides is the more number goes under 25 and you end up multiplying always by what's on the right. Okay, now this works in any case whatsoever, whether you change the numbers around, this works all the time. So 100 pennies gives us $1. 25 pennies is going to give us less. So if less, more divides. And what I mean by more divides is the, the more number, the bigger number of these two, 100, 100 in this case, goes under 25, and you always end up multiplying by what's on the right, okay? Now, assuming that we change this to, let's say, 101, right? Same idea. It's, it's, nothing changes. Remember I said if less, more divides, if more, less divides. If 100 pennies gives us $1, then 101 you know, pennies is going to give us more, right? Obviously, we know it's going to give us more because 101 is more than 100. It's going to give us more, and if more, less divides. And what I mean by less divides is the smaller number of these two, the lesser number of these two, which is 100, goes under 101, and you always end up multiplying by what's on the right, right? So if you take 101 divided by 100, we see we get $1.01, and that's true. Okay, it works in both cases. Now, Notice that at, at any time, we are always dividing by 100 and multiplying by 1. At any time, whether this number is big or small. When this number was 25 pennies, right, we are always dividing by 100 and, and then multiplying by 1. And when it was bigger, we were always, divide, always dividing by 100 and multiplying by 1. So let's just, you know, you know go over that. If, if 100 pennies gives us $1, then 25 pennies is going to give us less. If less, then more divides. The bigger number of these two, 100, goes under 25 and then multiplying by 1. So see... This instance, we are, we are dividing by 100 and multiplying by 1. Uh, when it was 100 and, 101 over here, because 100, if 100 pennies gives us $1, then 101 pennies gives us more dollars, even though we don't know exactly that. And because it gives us more, if more, less divides. The lesser number of these two goes under 101, and we end up multiplying by 1. So at any time, we are always dividing by 100 and multiplying by 1, and that's how come we get the exact sense, right? So like I said, I know some of you know this. But I'm doing this just so it's clear to everyone. If you feel that you know, please feel free to skip through it. Uh, if not, and it's helping you, that's that's great. All right. So over here, uh, and and this, there was a reason why I just did that, just so we can use the math in there. We I don't want to go ahead and type in 0.25 ourselves. I want to I want us to basically calculate it. All right. So so if the if the quarter if the quarter dot get side up is equal to head, if it landed on a head, head after tossing it, if the side up is heads. Then we want to go ahead and add its value to start and balance. And we know that for a quarter, right, it's it's 0.25. But we don't want to write 0.25. We want to go ahead and calculate it in, pro, in the program itself. So all we want, all we want, all what we want to do is we want to add to the start and balance. So I'm just going to say start and balance 
okay, is going to be equal to what's already stored in start and balance, okay, plus, now over here we can just type in 0.25, right, uh, or we can just type in, uh, actually, um, let's see, yeah, we can just go ahead and, yeah, we can type in, we can just type in 0.25 directly, okay, but I want us to actually do the math over here and just type, instead of 0.25, let's type in 25 out of 100 pennies, which is the same as 0.25, okay? So 25 out of 100. Remember, remember, we're always dividing and multiplying by 1. So if you take in 25 out of 100, you know that you're getting 0.25, right? So starting balance is going to be equal to what's already stored in starting balance. And then plus 25 pennies out of 100. That's what we're doing. So if starting balance had zero initially, yeah, it, it, we're taking zero and adding 25 divided by 100, which is 0 0.25, and storing the whole result, which is 0 0.25, all the way in the starting balance here. Okay, that's if the co the quoted coin ended on its head. Okay. Now we don't want to have an else if or anything because if we have an else if, then one only one of the one of the blocks blocks are going to run, but we want both of them to check and see if. If, actually, we want all three of them to check and see if they all all landed on the on the uh, on the head, right? So we can instead of using an else if or anything, because an, an else if is going to only run one out of those situations, or, or sorry, one out of um, those conditions. Okay, only one of them is going to be true. But then once we have this if statement, we're done. Let's create another if statement. Okay, it's, it's only going to check to see if this landed on the head, and if it did, then they're going to add twenty five cents to the starting balance. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this and say if dime dot, dot get setup is equal to head. If the, if the if the dime landed on its head, then instead of 25 out of 100, let's do 10 out of 100 because a dime is 10 cents out, out of 100, um, which is 0 0.10, right? So let's do the same thing for nickel. So if nickel dot get side up is equal to head. If it landed on the head, it's head. Then let's add instead of twenty five. Let's add five here. Five out of a hundred cents because a nickel is what five cents, right? So it's going to check any of these, all all three of these conditions to see which one, um, which one landed on 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 their head. Okay, so that's what it's going to do. And all this is going to run. Okay, all this is going to run. So basically, this loop is going to keep going uh, while the starting balance is less than one. While the starting balance is less than one dollar, it's, it's going to keep going. And as soon as the game hit, uh, as soon as the starting balance hits one dollar or more, okay, then it's going to exit out of the loop, and it's going to. We have to basically check. So over here, it says nothing is added to your balance for coins that land tails up. So that's why we checked over here for heads only. Heads checking to see if the side up is heads only. The game is over when your balance reaches one dollar or more, and we have it in the loop over here. As soon as, while the starting balance is uh, less than one, you, you're playing. But as soon as it hits one dollar or more, the loop exits. So the game will be over, over here, over. And then it says over here that if your balance is exactly one dollar, you win the game. You lose if your balance exceeds one dollar. So after we are done here, after the starting balance hits one dollar or more we want to check what's in the starting balance to see if it's ex exactly one ex exactly one dollar so if it's exactly one dollar then the person has won the game if it's um anything over one dollar the person has lost the game so now we have to go ahead and check again okay using an if statement let's create an if statement and check and check again here to see if um st starting balance is exactly one dollar okay so if starting balance is, is is equivalent to one, okay? Starting balance. So if starting balance is is equal to one dollar, then we let's display a message saying the person has won, right? Else, then let's, let's display a message saying the person has not won. Okay, so starting balance, you know, we know that it's going to be one, okay, greater than or equal to one. We know that, right? But but we want to over over here. We want to check to see that. 
we want to check to see if it's exactly one if it's exactly one then the person um like then like the, you know then then you won the game all right if it's okay so if, if it's exactly one then you won the game but if it's greater than or equal to sorry if it's greater than one dollar then you lost the game okay so i hope you understand that it's it say that it says that in the last part of the question uh, so let, let's have an else statement now you can go ahead and um, be, be explicit about this and say that else if the starting balance is uh, is, is greater than one you can go ahead and do that that's going to work but it, but guess what if it's not equal to one then it's something else okay o o over here if it's equal to one what whatever is in this block is going to run but if it's not equal to one that's th that's the else part and the else part is going to run so if the starting balance is equal to one let's display a message saying that you won the game you know, with a nice message so let's use a system dot out dot print f rather print f instead of pr print ln so system dot out dot print f and the print f takes a couple of arguments it takes in basically what you want to format so print f means print you know print formatted okay print in a formatted version so it takes in what you want to format okay it takes it in the form of a format string and in the format string, you, you have s format specifiers that specify how you want a certain you know value formatted in a string. And then the second set, a s the second arguments or set of arguments is basically what is going to replace those placeholders you set in your format string. Now you it will make sense as well as I do it. So I'm just going to display a regular message and say that um, you win the game. Um, let's see. So let's say you win the game with a balance off. Okay, now this is why I specify the format. For the format. So okay, this is why I'm going to type the format specifier. So you win the game with the balance of. I'm going to type in the percentage F. Percentage F. Okay, this is a placeholder. The percentage F is a placeholder. Something is going to replace it. But for now. This is how it looks like. F stands for float, meaning what I'm trying to format is a float. Okay, percentage F. Okay, F stands for float. And this is the character you type, you know, if you want to create a format specifier. Okay, percentage F. For now, let, for now, let's just leave it this way, and then we'll format it later on. So this is just a placeholder. Okay, whatever value I specify here is going to replace this value here. Okay. So you win the game with a balance off, and I want to basically replace this placeholder with start and balance here. Okay, so this is going to hold the start and balance here. Now, if I had multiple um, place um, format specifiers, if I had another one like this, what if I if I basically type in another uh, variable here? These are assigned respectively. So the first argument is going to be replaced with the first format specifier. And then the second argument is going to be is going to basically replace the, the second format specifier, so on and so forth. But because I have only one and I have only one argument, then it, that's going to replace this. Okay. Let's go ahead and copy this line. And yeah, so this, this is the these are the messages we want to display. Um I think that we are done for the most part so let's compile this let's see if we have any errors and we do I forgot to terminate this line so this line 2 and this line 2 let's compile this again and we're fine alright so let's run this and see what happens okay so there's a problem let's try to fix it Okay, let's try to fix it. All right. Okay, I know I know exactly what what the problem is. All right, so and just to prove it, the I'm sure the starting uh, the starting balance is always zero, so it's ne it's it's always less than one. So this is this is basically an, an infinite loop. But I'll explain why. And just to print out the value of it each time the loop I trait, I'll explain why in a, in a second. I'm sure the, the value of it is zero each time. 
so I should expect zeros being printed all the time. So let's run this here. Okay, that, that's why. That's exactly why. All right, so let me explain why that is happening. I'm just going to delete this line. Okay, so over here, remember we were doing this division here. We are adding 25 out of 100, which just gives us 0.25 over here. This gives us 0.1, and this gives us 0 0.05. Now, if we type in 25, okay, divided by 100 in the calculator, yes, we're going to get 0 0.25. So that's exactly what you would expect to happen here, right? But no, that's not what's going to happen here. Java is going to consider this division as an integer division. Okay, why? Because both operands are integers. Okay, because both operands are integers. And even though it's a regular division, because both operands are integers, Java is going to consider this as an integer division. And what happens with an in integer division is this. Java is still going to go ahead and, and do this calculation. But because it's considered an integer division, because both operands are integers, instead of returning 0 0.25, it's going to return only the integer part of this question. I'm sorry, this, this answer. So instead of returning 0 0.25, it's always returning 0. And we're adding 0 to starting balance, which, which was 0 initially. So starting balance is always 0. The way to fix this, or the way to go around it, is the thing is, one of the variable, one, one of the operands has to be a double. It doesn't matter if it's this one, it doesn't matter if it's this one. One of them has to be a double. Okay, if it's both of them, that's fine, but at least one of them has to be a, a double. Now you can go ahead and type in 25.0 here. You can, and it's going to fix it because at least one of them is a double now. But you don't, you know, let's let's use something called typecasting to do that, to kind of, you know, in this calculation, make this 25.0. It doesn't change the 25 itself. It, you know, 25 will still stay 25, but in this calculation, before you divide by 100, make it 25.0 before you divide by 100. All right. And that's, that's like typecasting. So the way you typecast one of the values to double, or both of them to, do, to, um, to a double, is you type in the keyword double in front of the number in parentheses. Now, the, it's not the number that's in parentheses. It's the, it's the double that's in parentheses. So basically, I'm typecasting. I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm saying that when you're doing this calculation, instead of using 25 the, uh, divided by 100, you make it 25.0 divided by 100 because I've made one of them now a double okay so I'm going to do the same thing for this one right but I'm going to use it on the 100 on the, on the next value over here 100 you can use, do it on the 10 too but I, I just want to show you this to switch around it so I'm going to type in parentheses double closet okay 